Welcome to my channel, INTJ Island. Today, I'm going to be talking about the deciding or judging function that you use. Is your go-to method thinking or feeling? In our youth, INTJs take a lot of grief for our personality preference for introversion. It makes us odd, and children don't like odd people being around them. But as we grow up, it is our preference for using thinking as our auxiliary judging function that often shows up as our most confusing preference as we encounter people who use feeling for that purpose. Someone who uses feeling to decide things is not an unthinking idiot, even though our knee-jerk reaction is sometimes to call them that. When facts are tossed aside and reason is rejected, it seems like insanity to a thinker. Feeling is a method of pursuing harmony in life. Harmony has its advantages. An example that comes to mind is when, as a child, I was distressed over something, whether it was a physical injury or something else that happened that was otherwise upsetting to me, I could always go to my mother and she would seek harmony for me by giving comfort and support no matter what had happened. She was far less interested in whether or not I was at fault or I had a rational reason for being upset and far more interested in whether or not she could set things right for me. She wanted harmony for me and my existence. My father didn't despise harmony, but he was far more likely to use his thinking in evaluating my situation and whether I had done something to bring this situation on and what I could do to personally fix it and hopefully avoid having it happen again in the future. For a child, it is very important to have someone who seeks harmony above all things in his life. However, it is also very important to have someone who uses thinking to decide things, because this is what keeps the child connected to reality and teaches him skills to use in later life. After all, the world is not filled with caring mothers to keep you living in a perpetual state of harmony throughout your life. You must, at some point, face hardship and deal with it yourself. You will face hard choices in life, and what makes you feel good at the moment may be destructive in the long run. Life is filled with hard realities. You must eat or you will die. This is a basic fact of life, and someone feeling bad about that is not going to fill your belly. If invaders march towards your country, feeling bad about it won't stop them from taking what is yours perhaps even your life. The universe has made our solar system apparently devoid of life except for one planet. The other planets are utterly dead. Life is the exception rather than the rule. Even worse, the vast majority of the species of life that have existed on our planet are now extinct. Life is a struggle from start to finish, and any species that doesn't struggle will die off. And as we have discovered repeatedly, when that struggle was not sufficiently effective, they have really gone extinct. Humans are in that same position every day. Remember that many quite formidable animals are no longer on planet Earth. Even mountains have been washed down to flatlands. Nothing is permanent. And if you wish to sustain something into the future, you must take the steps necessary to do so. Short term, you can do things to protect and sustain what you value, but long term, there will be problems. You see, Earth is not constant. The shape of the continents is constantly changing, slowly of course, but surely nonetheless. The species that currently exist at this time are mostly vastly different from those that existed in earlier times. Visiting Earth a few hundred million years ago would leave you feeling like a complete alien because you would recognize almost nothing at all. You can be sure that the same would be true if you pop forward in time by a similar amount. I point this out not to be negative, but to rather highlight the fact that only through struggling to sustain what you value will you have any chance of at least temporarily holding on to it. If you think about it, there is not a square inch of this planet that is not currently occupied by people who came there as invaders. Just like with animals of other species, man moves into an area to take it as his own. He will fight for that land, either against wild animals, 
botanical challenges, or other men. The entire history of the human race has followed this path. Life is made up of change, and it is sometimes good, and it is sometimes horrible. Change is just that, moving from what was to something new. If you get cancer, that is change. If an invading army comes in and overwhelms your land, that is change. Having a safe land, where you are secure and the economy is thriving, will grow to make things better. That, too, is change. But you can be certain that change, either good or bad, wonderful or horrible, will come to your land in time. And probably, given enough time, you will see both extremes appear. And if history is any indication, all that is great will fall into ruin at some point, with greatness rising up somewhere else far away. Humans have climbed to the top of the food chain by developing better brains. Thinking is what sets us apart. In the world of technology, it has been thinking that has moved us forward. The closest thing to feeling that is involved is when intuition drops a novel idea into our minds and we suddenly find a new fact or technique that was hidden throughout all of human history. People didn't invent electronics because it felt right or harmonious. And yet, a great many people use feeling to decide things in their lives. This goes beyond the problems of introversion and extroversion. This is a huge difference, and it is critical that we make some sort of sense of it if we are going to survive into the future. In cooking, there is a place for salt, and there is a place for sugar. And if you use the wrong one, you will ruin the recipe. There are times and places where using feeling to decide is better. And there are times and places where using thinking is better. From my perspective, this seems like a good analogy. Thinking is like the structure of a tall apartment building. It includes the foundation, the walls, the roof, and utility connections, creating empty safe apartments that await human occupation. Feeling is the furniture in the apartment, which makes the home livable and harmonious. It is perhaps not a perfect analogy, for feeling might go into the facade or the number of windows a dwelling might have, and feeling might help with some of the physical construction choices inside the apartment, such as laying out the plumbing and the accessories, even when those accessories were invented by thinkers. But the basic idea is sound. You can't use feeling to decide the materials for the foundation and the support members inside the building. You have to decide using thinking. And feeling has everything to do with making a family feel comfortable and at home in the rooms of the apartment. Life is like this in many ways. There are some areas where thinking will work well and feeling will utterly fail. And there are areas where feeling will do the job and thinking is lost. Imagine a cold stone castle without a fire burning in the fireplace on a cold winter night. That is what life can be like without a feeler around. The types who use feeling are labeled with names like the ISFJ nurturer, the ESFJ caregiver, the ISFP composer, and the ESFP performer. There is a very important place for all of those in our lives. The INFP healer, the ENFP Inspirer, the INFJ Counselor, and the ENFJ Teacher all fill important roles in our society. Life would be very Spartan without these people who use feeling as their first judging cognitive function. On the other hand, we would be living in the Dark Ages still, or even worse, if these were the entire collection of human types. Certain areas of human progress would not have been possible without the contributions made by the thinking types. Thinking created technology, and that replaced servitude as a supplier of luxury. My own oldest known ancestor to arrive in America came in as an indentured servant in the 1650s. Today, however, without forced servitude, technology produces things for everyone that even the most wealthy people of past generations could never have imagined possessing. Most of the social change that has occurred in the past century or two has come about because technology has made it possible. Thinking scientists, inventors, and engineers have done more to reform society than all the idealist reformers combined. If you like the society in which you live, you should thank the ESTJ supervisor, the ISTJ inspector, 
the ESTP doer, the ISTP mechanic, and the ENTP inventor, the INTP architect, and the ENTJ executive, as well as the INTJ scientist. The rationals who combine intuition and thinking have formed a huge component of the advancement that we all take for granted. The ENTP, INTP, the ENTJ, and the INTJ have all made huge contributions in creating the technology which has led to our current state of existence. If you remove the rationals from history, even the Roman Empire or the pyramids of Egypt would never have been possible. On the other hand, the hundreds of millions of people who have been slaughtered as a result of technology, from conception to old age, all over the world also have their roots in the creations of the thinkers. Nothing is all good or all bad. The trick is trying to get as much good as we can from things we create, while keeping the bad side as suppressed as possible. There's no way we could have 7 billion people on this planet and have the population continue to grow without massive technology involved in feeding them. At the same time, we have the ability to wipe out every one of those 7 billion people with weapons of our own design. There are also incredibly huge challenges coming. Droughts, glaciers, floods, catastrophic storms, and many things that we can't even imagine are coming over the future centuries. It will be up to technology created by thinkers that will give mankind hope for the future. But what about today? It is the combination of all the types in our society that make it the rich and vibrant entity that it is. We have rationals creating technology and feelers using it exhaustively. You watch a movie because rationals created the devices that make it possible, and artisans create content for your entertainment. The ESFP Marilyn Monroe didn't invent movies, but she used them to make an impact upon our society that still reverberates down through the years. Even though she died 56 years ago in 1962, just before my 11th birthday. Without the invention of film and projectors, and of course television, America's heartthrob most likely would have been forgotten by now. But the combination of the technology and the person created something that shows no signs of going away anytime soon. Those who primarily use thinking and those who primarily use feeling have a symbiotic relationship they share existence and enhance existence for each other. A stone castle without people and without a fire in the fireplace is just a ruin in most people's minds. An abandoned house is often seen as being haunted by the ghosts of those who once lived there. Why? Because a house without people is useless. Thinkers create structure and technology. We create the houses and the buildings but the feelers fill them up with art, music, and laughter. It makes things better for everyone. As long as performers perform and thinkers think, all will be well. If thinking is used where feeling is needed, you get uncomfortable situations. But if feelings are used where thinking is required, things like buildings and sometimes even societies will collapse. What are the advantages of your judging function preference? What are its disadvantages that you can see? Please let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, please click like. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. I'll see you next time.